Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. God is a good God. <laughs> and I don't know about you, but I, I feel real good. I've been in there with the pastor, and we, we've been praying, and I think the fire came in. Glory to God. Yeah. Jesus. Oh, my God. Mm. It's just good to know that you're still here. Yeah, I don't know about you, but I feel good about that. Ah, Ooh, I want to run. Mm. Jesus. There's something about the name of Jesus that make you want to move a little bit more. Make you want to open up your mouth and talk to him. Just want you to get excited about the Lord. Mm, I don't know what you had to go through all year, but it's almost over. Eh? Jesus. Oh, God. It's almost over. And a new beginning. Ah, a new beginning is on the horizon. What a mighty God. And I know I'm looking in the sanctuary. I know what God has done. Uh, you may not want to tell it, but I'll tell it for you. Ah, I've been here. Didn't nobody have to come and tell me about it. I was here to see it for myself about the goodness of Jesus. Ah, he's been in the place all year long. He's been yeah. in Roxana. Glory to God. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hey, God, a miracle working God. Yes, she is. Hey, set my soul on fire. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. Somebody cried out to God, and before you could finish the prayer, it had already happened. Thank you, Jesus. Ah, hey, God, don't look at me strange. I got something to shout about. You hold on to yours, or I'm not going to hold on to mine. Because he's been so good to me. Hey, God. When I think about the Lord and all that he's done for me, my soul cries, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hey, God. When the enemy thought he had me, had counted me out, my God said, no. Thank you, Jesus. Ah. I look in the room and I see my sisters and my brothers that prayed for me. <laughs> Took some time and prayed for me. They had me on their mind. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. God is so awesome. I tell you, when I think about what Roxana has gone through the last three years, <laughs> I'm not talking about what's going on in somebody else's house. I'm talking about what has gone on in Roxana. Ah, God, I thank you. Hey, God, and here we, we're knocking on the door of a new year. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. What a mighty God. Yes, he is. Thank you, Jesus. Ah, this is your call to worship. And you've been called in the house of the Lord to give him some praise. While you still have breath in your body, you can open up your mouth and say, thank you. Thank you, Lord. You can tell him about his goodness and all that he's done for you. Ah, God, somebody didn't wake up this morning, y'all. My God, Jesus, yeah. and we're still here. Ah, somebody ought to get excited about the Lord. Ah, thank you, Lord. We going we gonna to move on because Pastor said we're going to be out of here in a little bit. Yeah, yeah. But I'm going to tell you right now, I feel real good just thinking about the old year is on its way out of here and the new year is on its way in. Ah, uh-huh, you don't have to worry about it. You don't have to take a 747 for this. Just think about the goodness of ah, Jesus. <laughs> Glory to God. 
Just think about the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done for you. Did he wake you up this morning? Did you have food on your table? Clothes on your back? Still in your right mind? That's enough to tell God, thank you. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Somebody better tell him hallelujah. Hallelujah, God. Nobody but God could do. Ah, thank you, Jesus. Hey, thank you, God. Ah, nobody but God. Hey, God. <laughs> ah, they didn't have to come and get me this morning. The Lord woke me up, and I told him, thank you. Ah, I turned 62 years old yesterday. I got something to praise him. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Yeah, and I know I look good. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. He's just that good. Uh-huh. Yeah, but it, I look good, but you don't know my story. What I've had to go through to get to this end of this year. Thank you, God. Ah. Ah, I don't know about you, but you ought to tell your story. Don't let me tell it. I tell them all the time, you can't tell it. Let me tell it. What the Lord has done for me. Hallelujah, Jesus. Come on, let's praise the Lord. George, we're going to ask you to get your hymnals. And let's go to page 94. Joy to the world. Stanzas 1, 2, and 4. Stanzas 1, 2, and 4. Number 94, 94. Joy and joy. Number two, joy to the world. To the the Savior reigns. The Savior reigns. And men. And men uh, Wild fields. Wild fields and floods. Rocks hills. Rocks hills and plains. Repeat. Repeat the sound in joy. Repeat. Repeat the sound in joy. Repeat. Repeat the sound in joy. With truth. with truth and grace and makes, and makes the nation the glories of the globe the glories of his righteousness of his love and, and wonders of his love and wonders and wonders of let's do one one more time joy Right, the next page, and it says 93. The previous page is 93. The previous page, 93. Let's sing this worship song right here.
Oh, come, oh, come, oh, come. Oh, come, oh, ye. Your... Oh, come. Oh, come, ye, oh, come, ye to Bethlehem. Come and behold, come on. Let's sing the chorus, oh come let us adore him, 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 Christ the Lord. Let's sing the chorus, oh come let us, oh come let us adore Him a hand praise in this place. He is Christ, the Lord. Amen. He is God is an awesome God. Oh. And it's good to be here this morning. Keep bringing me up a little bit back there. Uh, it's, it's good to be here this morning on the Lord's Day. But then as we celebrate the birth of Christ, what an awesome Sunday, the last Sunday in the year. Oh God. When we come back into this place again, we'll be in a new year. And I shared with the ministers in my study, I shared with them that if this is my last time, and somewhere between Sunday and Sunday, if the Lord calls me home, don't worry about me. Go in the 24, keeping the church moving forward. For we, we don't know the number of our days but we should be thankful for the days that we do have. And we should make the most of them. Amen. Amen. I thank God for each one of you that are here this morning in this abbreviated service. I'm not going to hold you long. I'm going to get you back to your families. But it's only just that we gather here this morning to bless the Lord. Amen. Amen. If you have your Bible or electronic instrument, I want to lift two verses this morning coming out of the book of Luke, going over to chapter 2. Luke chapter 2. Uh, looking at verse number 6 and number 7. When you get there, say amen, and I'll know you're with me. Luke chapter 2, going over to verses 6 and 7. Amen. And I promise you I'm not going to be long, but there's a word from the Lord this morning. Are we there? Amen. For those viewing virtually this morning, it's good to have you with us as we go forward in celebrating this day word from God for God's people. And the word of God says, and so it was that while they were there, the days were accomplished that she should be delivered. And she brought forth 
her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. You may be seated. That's it. That tells a story. The text tells a story within itself of Mary and Joseph being there in Bethlehem and not able to find room in an inn or a hotel, not able to find a place to lay their heads at the moment that they needed it most. And the text says that while they were there, the days were accomplished. So Mary has now gone full term, and it was time for her to deliver a child. And the text today has historical value, but there's some prophetic value in the text as well. And if we only consider the historical value of the text, then we miss the promise that God has given to all of us. Today we celebrate the coming of Christ, and it's his day. The birth of Christ is celebrated on Christmas Day. God sent his son into the earth for a kingdom purpose. Today is the Lord's day, and it's a very special day because it's Christ's birthday that we celebrate. But the text not only reveals the lowly coming of a Savior who would bring change into the world, but it also leaves a prophetic word for us today, for those who are children of God through Jesus Christ. God has purpose for all of his children. I'm going to say that one more time. God has purpose for all of his children. Here it is. One more time. Three to get in your spirit. God has purpose for all of his children. If I had to tag a subject this morning, I'd talk about your day will come. Your day will come. We're talking from a prophetic point of view of the text, not from the historical. Because if it's historical, that day has passed. But the text has to have something that's relevant for us today that we can hold on to and carry into the future. He has purpose for all of his children. Let's explore the text to see what God says to us today. To only know the story is history, but the prophetic content makes it applicable today. The first thing that I want to share with you, that God chooses the place of his children's beginning. God chooses the place of his children's beginning. Here it is. Mary and Joseph now are in Bethlehem. They're in the city of David. And this is the place that God chose for his son to start his journey. It was in Bethlehem. And it seems like for a coming king, this was a strange place under strange circumstances because according to the text, it says when her days were accomplished that she should be delivered, then they find themselves with no room in an inn. You missed it. While they were there, the time came for her to give birth. Jesus in Bethlehem of Judea, David's hometown, the city of David. And, and God has a starting point for you. He had a starting point for each one of us who are children of God. See, here it is, here it is. A lot of times we mess up because we want to start 
our mission, we want to start the journey where we desire. But we all had a starting point. Mine was in Birmingham on, on the south side in a little neighborhood called Tittisville. Didn't have a whole lot, but it's okay because that was just my starting point. I'm trying to touch somebody today. Maybe, maybe somebody here other than me knows where you started out at. You weren't in the city with the bright lights, but you had a starting point. And, and, and that's where God started to do his best work. Your birthplace is just that. It's your birthplace. It's your beginning. It's not your destiny. And that's where a lot of people make the mistake they are too afraid to move forward on the journey. Then they want to remain in the place where God has started them. But God says, go forth to carry out the mission and the purpose that he has purposed in your life. It's just a starting point. So God has a place for you to begin. But that's not necessarily a place where it will end. L let me help you a little bit. Can I help you? And we got to go. Can I help you this morning? He started in Bethlehem, but it ended on Calvary. Yeah, just, just the beginning point. But it's not your destiny. And then his children's second thing, his children's beginning point is a part of God's prophecy. It's a part of his prophecy. Because here it is. The prophecy of Isaiah had already said that a child would be born wrapped in swaddling clothes and laid in a manger in a place called Bethlehem. God fulfilled his prophecy. Here it is, Jesus now, no room in the end. If there had been room in the end, it would have altered the course of his destiny. Somebody missed it this morning. Here it is. One step, one change in another direction alters your destiny. I wish I had time this morning for you to understand this. See, a lot of times we're not satisfied with what God has given us or where, where God has allowed us to go and come through some things. But it was all a part of getting you to your destiny. You, ha you had a starting point, but God had already mapped out a prophecy that was going to show you how to get where he wanted you to be. Y'all don't see it. No room in the end, but the prophecy said he would be born in a manger. A manger is a feeding trough within a stable where animals live, wrapped in swaddling clothes. Swaddling clothes are no more than dried out milk rags. You, oh, I wish I could help somebody. I wish I had one or two folk from the country here. Yeah, that, that swaddling cloth was what the farmer uses to wipe the, 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 the tit where the milk comes from. But here it is, here it is, in this process, God's prophecy has to be fulfilled. Can I share something with you? Your prophecy has to be fulfilled. God, every child of God has a written prophecy of how you're going to finish your life. You got a place where you start. And you're going to have a place where you finish. And in between, there are going to be some, some, some points of progress, but there are going to be some points of provision. There are going to be some points of protection. There are going to be some points where you're going to go through some trials and tribulations, but you're going to eventually meet your destiny. And can I say something today? I don't care who you are. I want you to understand when you try to wield your own way, God has a way of putting and inserting some steps in that prophecy that will get you back on track to get you to the place where he wants you to be. If you dare claim that you are a child of God, he doesn't leave it to change. 
Here it is. I can, I can look at my own prophecy. A young boy loses his father at 12 years old, and, and many around believe that no good will come out of him. But guess what? They said that about Jesus. Can anything good come out of Nazareth? But yet when God has his hands on you, I didn't understand until I got in this text that growing up as a child, God put some folk around me that didn't let me do some stuff that I desired to do in order to make sure that God's prophecy was fulfilled. I ran with some hellions, but the hellions would send me home before they went out to raise. Y'all didn't understand. Yeah, maybe God put them, put them in a place to understand that he had something greater. So when nightfall came, and they made their moves, they told me to go home. But some of the same ones that told me to go home are in prison now. Some are in the cemetery now. But, but because they sent me home, God continued to carry out his prophecy step by step. Trying to get a job to take care of my family, it caused me to have to move to Montgomery, Alabama. But that's just part of the prophecy. I'm trying to help you see your prophecy. Because when I got here, I said, well, Lord, since I'm here, I'm not going anywhere else. This is where I'm going to lay it down. I'm going to raise my family right here. I'm going to put in my time right here. But I didn't understand that God had something greater for me in Montgomery that he couldn't have gave me in Birmingham. Too much temptation. Too much negative influence. So he put a hedge around me by getting me to Montgomery. Y'all missed it. I'm telling somebody else's story. Because some of you have gone through some stuff and God uprooted you out of circumstances and situations that you felt comfortable in. You didn't want to come out of it, but God had a greater plan for you. So he uprooted you out of some stuff and moved you into a place where he could do more with you according to the prophecy that he wrote about you. Nothing you've done is by how. Or circumstance. It's all a part of God's plan. You shouldn't even be worried about tomorrow because God still has a plan. Yeah. yeah. His children's beginning is a part of his prophecy. Mary wrapped him in swaddling clothes, laid him in a manger. There was no room in the inn. A king in a state. He came lowly because he wasn't going to be an earthly king at that point. But he's still king of kings and lord of lords. And everything else lines up from that point on with the prophecy. For when he entered the city on a beast of burden, they were hollering, Hosanna, Hosanna in the high. They were receiving a king, but he didn't come in on a white horse. He came in on a beast of burden. Y'all didn't get it. He was laid in a manger, a feeding trough. The sacrificial lamb, the lamb of God. Yeah, most of us, if we knew the prophecy, would want to try to get in front of the prophecy. But when you're doing it God's way, you got to wait on God to put some things in place. The most unlikely place for someone that would impact the whole world is in a manger, in a stable, wrapped in swaddling clothes. Where you start may be the most unlikely place for the impact you will make in the world. 
y'all missed it. Where you start out is the most unlikely place for the impact that you will make in the world. God has written a prophecy about each one of us. And if you're going to have the impact that God wants you to have in a dying world, you got to live out the prophecy. I contend today for everybody in the sanctuary, for those that are viewing virtually, you're where you're supposed to be for the season that you're in in your prophecy. God wrote the chapter. That you might be in the place where you are right now for the season in your life. You can try to alter it. You can try to change course. But he's just like the GPS in your car. He'll reroute you. You'll go through some stuff that you might have not necessarily had to go through. You'll go down some side roads and some byways that you didn't have to necessarily take when you try to order or alter the prophecy. But when you alter it, God has a way of getting you back on course. Yeah. You didn't come from the good side of the tracks. You didn't have a silver spoon in your mouth. But you have a destiny that awaits you. And I'm so glad my beginning doesn't dictate my ending. When I've got God on my side. Or oh, it's there. Then third and finally, his children's identity is a part of God's prophecy. Because in the text, it says she gave birth to a son, her firstborn. The prophecy was that a virgin would have a baby. And it would be a male child born in Bethlehem in a manger, wrapped in swaddling clothes, and you will call him Emmanuel, God with us. She gave birth to a son, a firstborn, the prophecy. The child's identity is a part of God's prophecy. What am I saying to you today? Who you are is a part of God's prophecy for your life. Yeah. Your name means something. But you need to find out what it means. Because it's a part of your prophecy. I know who I am. According to the meaning of my name, Henry, it says king of his kingdom. And it's amazing that everywhere in my life God has planted me, he has elevated me. That's not by help of circumstance. It didn't matter where I fell at. Out of where I fell at, God would elevate. Oh, I, I'm, I'm talking to somebody. You're, you're in the place where you're supposed to be for God to use you to do the work that he wants done. It's a part of your identity. Some, here, here we are. We live in a society now where folk are confused about their identity. But their identity is a part of the prophecy. And with the identity being a part of the prophecy, when you try to change your identity, you're literally trying to rewrite God's prophecy. I don't want to walk heavy on that today. But when God has said purpose... And he's given you an identity that lines up with his prophecy for your life. It, some of you weren't the firstborn, but you might have been the second or third or fourthborn. But you fell in the place where God wanted you to fall for the purpose that he had for you. Let's look at David's life. The last of the little. But yet he was a king in the making. 
Can I help somebody? When we talk about it, let's look at Joseph. How God put him in place. All that he went through. All that he endured. Lied on, thrown in jail. But even in jail, he was elevated. Y'all ain't heard nothing yet. It doesn't matter where you are in life. It matters what God has a sign that you should accomplish in the prophecy. For everywhere that God lets you land, God has an assignment for you. Don't try to change your identity. Be satisfied with who God made you out to be. I've learned to be comfortable in the skin that I'm in. Y'all ain't heard nothing yet. You got to learn to be comfortable with who you are in Christ Jesus. God built me for this time. He built me for the moment. He put in me everything that I would need to accomplish the things that I need to accomplish for the kingdom of God. It does me no good to try to be a doctor pair. Because he didn't give me what I needed to be a Perry. But he gave Perry everything that he needed to accomplish what he does for the kingdom of God. It wouldn't have did me any good to be a George Thornton because that wasn't my role to play in my prophecy. But God knew George Thornton and wrote a prophecy for him. And he was the only one that could fulfill it. I don't need to call the roll this morning. What I'm trying to get you to understand that your identity plays a role in the prophecy that God has written about your life. Find contentment in who you are in Christ in the text that the time had come that she should deliver and she brought forth her firstborn son wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger yeah you may be the son or daughter of earthly parents but if you've accepted Jesus Christ in your life, you have a heavenly father who cares for you. Oh, God, I'm there. I'm done this morning. Your day will come. For God has written a prophecy about each one of us. He gave us a starting date. He gave us an ending date. And in between, he's given us some stops along the way. But the kingdom purpose overrides all other purpose in our prophecy. Be content in who you are. Don't look across the way and want to be somebody else. Let me help somebody today. Because you may not want to pay the price that it takes to be that person. You may not want to go through what they had to go through to be the person that they are. You might not can take the hurts, the pains. You might not be able to deal with their trials and tribulations. They were built for that. And God has built you for the things that you shall do. But you must remain in your identity, who you are in the kingdom of God. for you. That's the final note right there. Your day will come when you will complete all that God has desire for you to complete. Your destiny is still unfolding. Trust God today. He didn't bring you this far to leave. Everything that God allows has purpose. 
and I'm going to close it right there. Everything that God allows has purpose. I'm going to say it one more time for those on virtual. Everything that God allows has purpose. It's a kingdom journey. You might not like it. It might not feel good. But everything that God allows has purpose. There's a reason why you're going through what you're going through. There's lessons to be learned on this journey. Some of you are better for your trials and tribulations. Because with your trials and tribulations, he taught you patience. You didn't understand it, but right now you can see it. That through everything you've gone through, God has given you some patience. That every day hadn't been a good day. But when I'm feeling at my lowest point, I've learned not to complain. Because God is still keeping me. Everything that he does has purpose. It doesn't matter where you are or what you're going through in life. Look beyond the heat to be looking forward to. Pastor, what are you telling me today? God didn't waste his time on allowing you to come in the earth. He sent you into the earth for purpose. You have a destiny to meet, but you can't get there by yourself. You've got to have the Lord on your side. So as we celebrate the coming of Christ this morning, it's good for historical value, but for the prophetic value, he's still raising up sons and daughters in the earth to do kingdom work. And I ask the question today, are you on your assignment? Are you doing what God has called you to do? Are you living a life that's pleasing in his sight? That he might be glorified through every good work. That's the challenge today. Your day will come. Just keep on living. Keep trusting. And keep your eyes on God. For he's going to use you to do a great work in the earth. That will bring glory to his kingdom. Let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise in this place. For he's worthy this morning. I don't know about you, but I'm satisfied with Jesus this morning. I'm satisfied with a little bit in the absence of a whole lot. I'm satisfied with the things that I don't understand because I know he's written a prophecy. And my whole life is in his hand. I wonder if there's anybody here today that you realize this, this morning, right now in this moment, that God has purpose for you. That whatever it is you're doing in life, that is to be to God's glory. Yes, it can be trying sometimes. Yes, it can be hard wrenching sometimes. But I want you to stand your ground for the kingdom of God. For God is still making a way. He's still working some things out. It's not over till it's over. But while you have time, you ought to tell him thank you this morning. Thank him for the reasonable portion of grace and mercy that suited your case. None of us are worthy, but God has been faithful. He's watched over us. He's kept us, and he's continually made a way for us. But if you stay the course, your day will come. Let's bless the Lord in this place. 
Oh, let's bless him like we really mean it. If God has given you something that you know you didn't deserve, you ought to tell him thank you right now. If he's opened some doors for you, you ought to tell him thank you right now. If he made some things possible in your life that you thought you couldn't do, you ought to tell him thank you right now. He's worthy. Oh, he's so worthy. Let's bless him in this place. The choir's going to sing. morning we're about to get ready to go 
I just want to say to my Rock Center Church family and to all of you who are present in the sanctuary, to those that are viewing virtually this morning, Merry Christmas. That Mary is very important at the front of Christmas. In its original text, it, it carries the connotation of walking by faith. Y'all miss that. We say it in celebration, but it's a declaration of walking by faith. To be merry in Christmas is to follow Christ. So our faithfulness should be an example of the joy that we have through Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Let's not get it confused. People have put the X up there. X must, but I'm, I got a Christ in my life. And I'm excited about that. Amen. Amen. And, and I promised you I was going to get you back to your families. I want you to enjoy your day, enjoy your week. For when we gather in this place again, it'll be the first Sunday in a new year. This is the last stop in this last chapter. So as you go through your week, still carry Thanksgiving in your heart. As the Lord allows you to see a year coming to a close but a new one unfolding. Be thankful for what you do have. Oh, bless his holy name. And when the time had come, and there was no room in the inn, Mary gave birth to the Savior of the world in a state, wrapped him in swaddling clothes, and laid him in a manger for the whole world to behold. You know the rest of the story if you're a Bible reader. Shepherds came who were tending their flock by night. Wise men, and some translations call them scholars, came to see the Christ child. But there was one named Herod who wanted to know where he lay. His intent was not to worship him, but to kill him. What am I saying to you as we get ready to go? You may have many supporters around you, but every now and then you'll come across one that's intent is to kill you. But don't worry about that one. For God will purpose in the hearts of others not to give him the information or her the information that they need to get you. He'll put a hedge around you. So I hope that blesses somebody today. Keep moving towards your destiny that God has purposed for you in your life. Amen. Amen. We're ready to go. If you can stand where you are, I'm going to ask you to stand as we go before the Lord in prayer. It's been a good day. It's been a good day. And it shows us that we can do whatever we want to do when we have made up minds. Amen. Let us go before the Lord in prayer. Let us pray. Father God, we thank you right now for today. Lord, we, we come now saying thank you for allowing us to see Christmas Day 2022. Lord, there were some who didn't make it to this point, but by your grace and mercy, you let us see a new day's dawning. And we're thankful. Lord, we may not have gotten everything we wanted, but what we did get was been, it's enough. 
Lord, there may have not been all the things on the table for the meal has been prepared, but Lord, it's enough. And we say thank you. Lord, some have come this morning with minor aches and pains. But Lord, their faithfulness brought them into the house of the Lord once again. So as your man servant, I command this morning, I say touch like only you can. Just a touch from you, Lord God, can fix whatever's broke. It can bring healing to our earthly bodies. Lord, we come this morning praying for those that don't have. That, Lord, that you'll give them whatever they need right now in the name of Jesus. Lord, some without a home. Some without food. Lord, some have even lost hope. But, Lord, I say touch right now. Lord, give them what they are in need of. Speak to their needs right now. Lord, continue to watch over our sick and shut-in, those that are homebound in hospitals and nursing homes. Lord, even remember our incarcerated. That, Lord God, in their isolation, Lord God, you are able to speak to them and give them a revelation of who you are. Lord, we come praying for those who found it not worthy to be here this morning or to view virtually, but they are caught in themselves. We come praying for them right now. That, Lord, your open blind eyes that they might see. Have your way, Father God. Now, Lord, this week as it unfolds, Lord, keep a hedge around us. Keep us in perfect peace. And, Lord, if it be your will, allow us to assemble in this place on the Sunday to come, the first Sunday of a new year, and bring praises unto your name. We thank you this morning for our destiny as children, sons and daughters of the most high God. We thank you for destiny today. Lord, we thank you for the road that we are traveling. That Lord, not only did you give us provision, but you put aside protection. And then Lord, you've allowed us to learn perseverance. We thank you today. Now Lord, as we depart from this place, give us traveling grace. That Lord God, that we make it to our destination safely. And when we turn the knob, meet us on the other side. Allow us to find things decent and in order. Lord, if we left in chaos and confusion, then Lord, when we arrive, let us find peace in that place. Have your way, Father God. Continue to watch over us now. Bless the gifts that will be brought this morning. That you multiply it so it can go farther than it could go on its own. For the furtherance of your kingdom. Bless each and every member of this branch of Zion. Bless every individual in the kingdom of God like only you can. Now may the grace of God and the sweet communion of his Holy Spirit Rest, rule, and abide with us henceforth and forevermore. And all of God's children said, Amen, Amen, Amen. Tell somebody you're happy to see them this Christmas morning and you love them.